The transfer portal is acting crazier than Tom Cruise on that one Oprah interview, but maybe, just just maybe, that that's not a bad thing. I'm somebody that looks at life with a glass half full. I consider myself an optimist. And most of the time, we only hear negative comments surrounding the transfer portal. Oh, he's only taking NIL money. He's not buying into our weak culture. We're losing a player. But you're gaining a roster spot. And that roster spot may be filled with a more prominent prospect that actually gets you into the college football playoff. And knowing Greg Sankey, he wants his conference well represented. So adding in one player may be the difference of you going to the postseason or sitting at home in December. And I figured today, let's go ahead and break down one key player in the portal and find them a perfect home in the SEC. But what's going on, SEC Unfiltered? It's Cole Thompson here. Make sure you like the video, comment down below which prospect you would like to see on your favorite team, and hit subscribe because we're talking about SEC football every single day here on SEC Unfiltered. Follow me on my own YouTube channel, at Mr. Cole Thompson, and my own social media platform, at Mr. Cole Thompson. Follow us on social media because we're everywhere and we're going to be everywhere so long as Elon Musk owns the show. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at SEC Unfiltered. And for the number one content surrounding the number one conference in all of college athletics, make sure that you visit secunfiltered.com. One transfer for every SEC contender. I have two rules with this. Number one, these are not predictions. Actually, I guess three rules. Number two, I'm picking one player per team. It doesn't mean that that school is only going to get that player. You could see two guys go to Auburn or two guys go to Bama or two guys go to Missouri. But just to be able to talk about the rich abundance that is in the portal, I'm going to pick one guy. And number three, you got to be considered a contender. None of these out of the blue, willy nilly, maybe will pan out. If you're predicted to go at least bowl eligible, I'm going to mention you in this video. So let's get things started with the favorites and the national champion probable contenders, Georgia. I go quarterback. Let me explain. Carson Beck's not losing his starting job. Nobody can ever expect Carson Beck, arguably the best quarterback in college football, to lose his starting job. But how do you feel about your depth? How do you feel about what is residing? And yes, you do have some young talent coming up, especially a guy like Brian Montgomery, but you may need that bridge quarterback for a year, especially if Gunnar Stockton is somebody who does try to transfer. So Curry Brown has at least some bit of reps. He has an understanding of different offensive personnels. They loved running the football in Coral Gables last year. And now that you have a one-two combination headlined by Trevor Etienne in Athens, if anything were to go south pretty quickly with Carson Beck, where he suffers a major injury that sidelines him for the rest of the year, this doesn't take you out of the running. In fact, I would say probably Ja'Curry Brown actually comes in and plays pretty well to where you are going to be a team that goes to the college football playoff. Now, you may not win the SEC and you may lose a game in the process, but again, once you get into the postseason, all bets are off. We are going to see eventually a 12-seed upset a 5-seed, and we're going to see a group of 5 school beat a prominent power 5 school. You don't want to be that team that falls early on in the process. So if you go ahead and add in Ja'Curry Brown, at least you're bringing in somebody with some sustainability and more importantly, reps underneath his belt. Alabama, there are not that many needs right now. I think the main one is probably defensive back. And the big reason why is because you watch that game. I watched the game. A-Day was awesome, but there were some mishaps. Yeah, you got to see a lot of positivity when it came to Ty Simpson and a little bit of Jalen Milrow. But that secondary is going to be a little bit of a weak point. And it should because if you're going from a 3-4 base now to a 4-2-5 underneath Kane Womack. And Womack has the Husky role. That is basically like your nickel defender, a guy who's going to be playing in the slot, physical against the run, can cover. I think that when you look at a guy such as Malachi Moore, he's better suited at safety but you need that veteran presence. Florida State's Greedy Vance fits the bill. He started off his career at Louisville. Last season was the starting nickel defender at Florida State. Has played some extensive reps during his time. He's actually taking a visit to Kentucky right now, which may end up hurting you. But at the same moment, there is a reason to believe and have optimism that this could be a player that comes in right away. Last season, 36 tackles, seven pass breakups. Uh, he was really, really good during the undefeated regular season. I think that they need to add in one veteran name to that secondary. Greedy Vance fits the criteria. And more importantly, I think that he'd be a name that people would love to see in this defense, especially with Kane Womack trying to lead the charge. Auburn, uh, anybody can tell me when was the last time Auburn had a 1,000-yard receiver? Anybody, I'll wait, I'll wait. 
I mean, Auburn's been waiting since 1999 since to, since they've had a 1K receiver. It has been over two decades since we have seen a wide receiver finish with at least four numbers attached to his name. 1999, the iPhone didn't exist. IMAX movies weren't around. 3D glasses still were in red and blue. That was when Auburn had a 1K receiver. And Keandre Lambert-Smith is expected to go visit the Tigers in the upcoming weeks. The big thing about him, he has that number one mantra. But you could probably be okay with him playing a complimentary role. I believe Ken Coleman would break that streak this year so long as you have a quarterback that you trust, that you trust. And I'm going to say that one more time, that you trust. But regardless of who is the starting quarterback, you always want to have another weapon. Two is better than one. And when I look at Auburn, they could be that surprise team that really takes that next jump underneath Hugh Freeze. I like the rushing attack. I like what you have on the offensive line. I feel like the defense is going to be a little bit more prominent this offseason underneath the new coordinator in DJ Durkin. But I feel like you need that complimentary piece. Keandre Lambert-Smith, number one wide receiver for Drew Aller last year. They went 10-3. and three. They felt pretty good about themselves. I just feel like at this point, you find a veteran for that room. Somebody that can elevate the status and maybe be a more surefire hands guy. Great route runner complimentary to what Cam Coleman is. This betters your odds of not only being able to beat Alabama and take back the Yellowhammer State, but also just stay alive long enough to where conversations about the college football playoff will unfold. LSU. Brian Kelly's come out and said this. He, This is not me. This is him coming out and saying, we feel good about our roster, except for defensive line. And for good reason. You lose Mason Smith. You also lose Makai Wingo. You feel confident that the young talent behind them is going to take a step forward but wouldn't you want a veteran to be able to lead the charge? Simeon Barrow from Michigan State is somebody who I think is going to garner a lot of SEC interest. He was phenomenal during the 2022 season, kind of was hit and miss at times last year, but he's really good against the run. And at this point, you look back at the history of what college football is. They need stable defensive linemen. Every team in America would love to be able to have a stellar defensive tackle. Yeah, it's cool to really have some stability on the outside with edge rushers, with good linebackers, but you want to know what makes the job really easy when you have a good defensive tackle. And a guy like Simeon Barrow going down to Baton Rouge would be a plug-and-play fit. He'd be somebody that you can trust with your team. And Blake Baker knows how to get good play out of defensive tackles. Imagine giving a 325-pound defensive tackle to Blake Baker, who just killed it in Columbia, bringing down to Baton Rouge, and now you fortify your squad. I really do believe that LSU is going to make that jump to where we're talking about 11 wins in 2024, but your defense was sus last year. Can't be sus in 2024 if you want to go the dozen dance. Texas. You got to go defensive tackle. And this is a little bit of a shame. I'm not talking bad about what is residing in Austin right now. Welcome to the party. But when I'm saying welcome to the party, also remember you got to build your trenches. This is not the Big 12. You're not going up against Kansas State. You're not facing Baylor on a Saturday. You're going to Baton Rouge. You're going to College Station. You're going to play against teams that are more established and have figured out we have to win in the trenches. Bill Norton comes on over potentially this weekend in the orange and white game. He has a relationship with new linebackers coach and co-defensive coordinator Johnny Mason from Arizona. Last year, he was very prominent, did a great job. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, 20, uh, 12 starts at defensive tackle, uh, four and a half sacks last year. Their defensive line was the reason why Texas went to the college football playoff. Tavondre Sweat, Won the Outland Trophy. He was the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. You also had the best interior defensive lineman and arguably, in my opinion, the best draft defensive player in Byron Murphy. You want to be able to have that same type of sustainability, you got to go ahead and build up your trenches. I think a guy like Bill Norton comes on in, replaces that sweat role. Maybe he won't be 365 pounds, but who really cares as long as he's able to add pressure to the backfield and terrorize a quarterback in the same way. You know what is really terrorizing? Back sweat. Nobody loves back sweat. I can tell you right now, as somebody that lives in Houston, Texas, plays golf on the weekends, that sweltering humidity is the worst thing. And I have a terrible back swing, but I don't have back sweat whenever I wear Roback. Roback's performance polos are not only form fitting, but they also look great on you and they feel fantastic. It feels like at times you're almost wearing nothing. And I'm not saying don't go out and not wear anything. You don't want to be arrested, but 
when you are wearing Roback, it does kind of feel like you're wearing nothing. They're form-fitting. More importantly, they're breathable, and they're a perfect fit for everything we got going on this summer leading up to week one, which, by the way, is an excellent performance polo hoodie for your game days every single year in the SEC. So how do you go ahead and find out more information? Visit Roback.com, R-H-O-B-A-C-K. Use the promo code SECU for 20% off your very first purchase. 20% off on performance polos, hoodies, shorts, whatever you see fit. We got you covered. And they just released their Azalea collection. The spring has sprung, and so could your wallet by going out and making sure that you get an Azalea shirt. Go ahead and visit SECU. Use the pro, I mean, you uh, visit Roback. Use the promo code SECU for 20% off your very first purchase. We got you covered on the rest. Just make sure that you tell them thank you and SEC Unfiltered set you. Ole Miss, Louisville running back Penny Boone. Here's the thing. I like Ole Miss. I have made it pretty abundantly clear in any of these videos. For those of you that actually follow me both on my own YouTube channel and here, you, you, you know how I feel about Ole Miss. They're America's team this year. They, they are the team to beat, in my opinion, to where everyone's going to rally behind them and want to see Lane Kiffin finally reach the mountaintop. I worry about that running back room. And Ole Miss fans, you should worry about that running back room. I don't know when I'm getting in Ulysses Bentley. I don't know when I'm going to see Logan Diggs. Penny Boone was a nightmare for Toledo last year. They called him the Rocket because if he played for the Rockets, but because if he blasted off for over 1,400 rushing yards and 14 touchdowns, and he's going to get a lot of garneration in the SEC. He's got 21 potential offers waiting for him, including another team that's going to be right alongside you in the hunt for the wild card, Tennessee. Wouldn't it just be a wonder for Lane Kiffin, the guy who was pelted with mustard caps and golf balls and Neyland Stadium, just pluck a player that absolutely would fit what Josh Heupel wants to run. You pair him alongside Jordan Watkins, Caden Priesthorn, Trey Harris, Juice Walls, and Jackson Dart slinging around the yard like no one's business. You're in good hands. You could call yourself Allstate if you really want to. I think that this is a very good fit for the stylistic offense, but more importantly, you're not going to get Damian Martinez. So you got to find a way to be able to add in somebody else. To me, the best way to do so, go ahead and get yourself a premier running back like Penny Boone. Tennessee, uh, you just lost your leading tackler. That's really all I have to say at this point. It's a shame. It's a, it's sad that you now have to find a way to replace Elijah Herring. But this is where you need to make that phone call. This is where you have to go out of your way to find yourself a new thumper. And I think a guy that would make a lot of sense for you is Jalen Alderman from Louisville. Last season, he started all 13 games for the Cardinals, a Cardinals team that kind of came out of nowhere. 62 tackles, seven tackles for losses, two years of eligibility. So maybe this isn't the final product of what you're seeing. I look at this defense. That's going to be the hindering point. It'll be the Achilles heel. For the volunteers. Yeah, the running back room is a little bit barren in terms of productivity outside of Dylan Sampson. Potential, a lot of it. Productivity, not that much. But I already mentioned Penny Boone for Ole Miss. I figured at this point you need another linebacker, somebody that can do a little bit of everything, blitz, play the run, even make some plays in coverage. Jalen Alderman did that for an ACC contender last year. Make a lot of sense for him to go ahead and return at least close to the state of Kentucky. Maybe just go on over one state. You know, one state has a lot of good whiskey. Maybe he just didn't like bourbon. Who's to say on that one? Kentucky, speaking of the state, Colorado's Alton McCaskill. You have a good running back in Chip Traynham. You have a guy that's proven he can be a bruiser back. You don't really, I think, have that number one mantra, dude. Now, you have some good receivers. Barry and Brown's back. You also feel really good about your quarterback situation with Brock Vandergrift. He can throw it like Uncle Rico. No one's business. Just go ahead and say, see you later, alligator. That's what he can do. But to me, you add in a running back like Alton McCaskill, who was on pace to have a premier season at Houston before he transferred to Colorado, Maybe you're going to add in that second element. We've seen this time and time before where a guy doesn't pan out at one school, but then he goes to the SEC and he's supposed to be like the other dude. Guess what happens? He ends up living up to the hype and he ends up being a pretty prominent player. McCaskill definitely, I think is going to draw a lot of interest throughout the country. Maybe he goes back to the Lone Star State. To me personally, though, I would love to see him in Lexington on Kroger Field being a number two complimentary piece to chip train him and maybe eventually take over as the number one. Oklahoma, TCU's Demonic Williams is going to be visiting the campus this weekend, and it is a really good fit. Let me explain why. Because of number one, you need to be able to have 
exceptional depth on the defensive line. It's kind of like I'm just repeating myself. Am I Phil Connors living in Groundhog's Day? Who's to say? But number two, this is a guy that you have been able to see for the last two years in the Big 12 and how he's taken the necessary steps forward and how he's looked with his improvements, how he's been as a pass rusher, how he's been as a complementary piece opposite of a national championship caliber roster. Last two seasons, 60 total tackles, 9.5 tackles for losses, 4.5 sacks. This is one of the best players in the portal right now. And Brent Venables is a wizard when it comes to defensive alignment. I trust this offense underneath Seth Luttrell, but I just want to have every nook and cranny covered. And to me, if I'm able to get a bull rushing nose guard type of defender that will just terrorize into your offensive linemen, kind of like TCU had for the last two years, go ahead and give me Demonic Williams. I think he'd be a really good fit. Texas A&M, they need help on the defensive line. That's a given. They also need to figure out who is their number one wide receiver. Kind of like Auburn, it's been a hot minute since we've seen a 1,000-yard pass catcher. Now, it hasn't been since 1999, but Mike Evans doesn't grow on trees, and Galveston Ball is not producing another type of playmaker that is making headlines in the NFL. However, there is a player in the Lone Star State right up the road in Samuel Brown that came on over from West Virginia two years ago that has proven he can be a number one target. I like this wide receiver room as a whole. You have Moose Muhammad. You keep Noah Thomas. I love Jabardi Barber, who came on over from Troy, but now he's injured, so you're going to miss some time. And they have some good young talent. Isaiah Williams is a vertical speed threat, but I feel like you need that veteranship. I just feel like you need somebody who's played against quality competition and proven that he can be a difference maker at the second level. You feel good about your wide receiver room, but you don't have a number one. Get yourself a number one potential guy in Samuel Brown. At worst case scenario, you saw what he did when he was playing with Matthew Golden. Complimentary piece. He could be a number three. He could be a number two. You'd rather have two number twos than one number one and no number two and like five number threes. To me, this is kind of where Samuel Brown takes that link. And last but not least, Missouri. I don't know where to go with this team. They need help on the offensive line. They need help at the linebacker position. They definitely need help on the secondary for Corey Batoon's 425 set. But there's a name that really stands out. And I'm not sure if you guys have been paying enough attention, but he's in Huntsville, which is right up the road for me. So I get to watch him play last year. Demarcus Crosby, this is a really good player. This is a guy that came from a JUCO last season, immediately joined Conference USA, and was one of the best players in the conference immediately. Four interceptions, three pass breakups, 39 total, I mean, solo tackles, 55 total tackles. He also had six tackles for losses. Imagine a guy flying to the football at a thousand miles an hour and basically say, I'm locked in on a target. I'm a heat seeking missile and I'm not going to stop until I see him on the ground. That's Crosby. And the one thing that we know about Missouri right now, they lose their defense coordinator in Blake Baker, but they also lose a ton of talent in that secondary, including Chris Abrams and including Dennis Rakestraw. So you need to be able to bring in at least a player, a prominent, somebody that has a little bit more upside. I think DeMarcus Crosby would be a really good fit. I think that he fits exactly the style of defense they want to run, and he can play a variety of different roles. And basically, if you can go ahead and get four interceptions, even if it's in Conference USA, you're doing something right. Make sure that you like the video, hit the subscribe button down below, because we talk college football every single day here on SEC Unfiltered. Make sure that you're also following me on social media, at Mr. Cole Thompson. Make sure that you're following us on social media, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you see fit at SEC Unfiltered, and to keep up with the number one content surrounding our favorite sport and your favorite sport, make sure you visit secunfiltered.com. I'm Cole Thompson. Later, folks.